one of my closest friends is an atheist, and I've asked her why she is, and she told me that she's read the doctrines of many theologies, including Christianity, and as soon as she got to the part in the Bible where she read about Adam and Eve, and they said, or it said, that woman shall suffer the pain of childbirth for the sin of Eve. She told me, I stopped reading because I refuse to believe in something that doesn't believe in me. What would be your response to her? Okay. When a person rejects a certain worldview, you have to respect, if they're being honest, why they reject it. And if I were sitting across a table with her, I would think she's a woman with a tender conscience, a woman who has personal worth, and a woman who says, if this is the way I'm described, there's no place for me here. So, if her deduction is correct, one can validate the objection. But if the, discussion, if the deduction is incorrect, then she has to change her view. First, she has to know what it is she has adopted while she has rejected something else. I remember I was speaking at uh, uh, the Center for Geopolitical Strategy in Russia, full of atheists, full of atheists. And uh, God gave me the privilege, actually, of seeing the general come to Christ. So he invited me to speak there, but he says, they'll be pretty hostile. And they sure were. They were going like this the whole time I was talking. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and at the, um, the Q&A time, one guy, the fellow kept going like this, shot his arm up in the air and stood up, and he said, you've been talking about God the whole time. He said, what on earth are you talking about? Well, the question logically to answer him was, are you an atheist? Yes. What is it you're denying? What is it you're denying? So when a woman or a man says they are denying the existence of God, what are they affirming in its place? She is actually affirming that this God or religion is not true. Atheism is. But if atheism is true, she has no value. If atheism is true, there's not even a point of reference for her worth. We are the product of primordial slime. Time plus matter plus chance, the accidental collocation of atoms, here we are. A blip on the radar screen, a screen of time. That's exactly what Bertrand Russell said, that this whole edifice is doomed to extinction. We are here by cosmic accident. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, first she reduces her own worth to nothing but material. Secondly, she's making a moral judgment. But in an amoral universe, how do you invoke a moral judgment? If this is a naturalistic framework, why is it morally wrong for God to say you're not of any worth? But it's because she's invoking a moral law and she's invoking worth, which basically tells me she's actually borrowing from the Judeo-Christian worldview in order to debunk it. All right, now here's the point. You never take a word out of context. You always put it in its larger context. You know, when Jesus saw the woman who was taken in adultery, he really let him have it. Where's the man? Where are her accusers? The guys never brought the man. He was gone somewhere. She obviously didn't commit adultery with herself. You were living at a time in a culture then where this kind of thing happened so often. He writes some letters in the sand and he says to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. The woman with the alabaster ointment in that culture, for her to have even touched him was audacious. And yet, the Pharisees sitting there said, if Jesus only knew who this woman was, he would not have had her do have any part in him. And he said to them, you know, guys, what she has done to me is going to be told all over the world where the gospel is preached. And he received her gift. When I was in Albania last year, they sat me down in the museum and brought the Greek translation of Chrysostom of the New Testament. And I looked at the passage where this woman with the alabaster ointment had poured it on Jesus. Her story is told where the gospel is all over the world. 
when he revealed himself in the resurrection, he went completely against the climate and the culture of the time. He revealed himself first to the women who had come to the tomb, whose testimony was not even valuable in court at that time. So if you see the special place he gives to womanhood and the glory that he has crowned, the charm and the mystique of womanhood is both in its intellect and in its mystique. Today, if you were to take women writers, they touch the nerve of reality much better often than men did. I think of people like, uh, women like uh, Dorothy Sayers and all of them. Brilliant, brilliant writers. What has happened, unfortunately, is the way our cultures have oppressed, always find somebody to oppress. And as a result, we read that verse in a vacuum and we don't read it all the way, the rest of the way. When you see him highlighting people like Sarah, people like Ruth, people like Deborah, and in the New Testament, you see the names of Phoebe and the names of Mary and all writ large, you see that he tells a man to love a woman the way Christ loved the church. That is the greatest compliment he ever paid you or me, that you were as valuable and you are as valuable as humanity is to him. There is neither Jew nor Greek nor male nor female, the Apostle Paul writes. So tell her, please don't read that out of context. Read the whole thing. Your reaction would be right if that's all that it's, uh, what it says there is this. Remember, where there is a plurality of the miracle in physical acts, there is also a plurality of judgment in physical expression. You will see this in Exodus, you'll see this in Genesis, where there's dramatic miracles, there are dramatic judgments as well. And that sin has a cost, and we always remember through this from whence we came. And the glory is through the seed of that woman he was going to bring the Redeemer ultimately. And I think that is what grace is all about. She should not read it in a vacuum. Tell her to take a good look at Christ and see his treatment of women. And I think she'll find out that there is no other worldview again. I repeat, no other worldview that gives the respect to womanhood that Jesus does. Okay. <clears throat>